Hello everyone, it's Eric here. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the Army Painter. So, normally when people think of the Army Painter, they don't think of premium miniature paints. In fact, I think most people usually see the Army Painter as kind of introductory paints or economical paints, but they're usually regarded as kind of having issues with the medium separation and the coverage isn't great, but that may be about to change. They're just previewing right now a new uh, miniature paint range called uh, Army Painter of War Colors Fanatic. And I guess, I don't know if this is going to totally replace their current uh, War Colors range or just be a separate range. But it looks like they're really attempting to make a true premium paint range with really good coverage, even on colors like yellow and orange and white. And the interesting thing is that it's going to be a huge range. This isn't just like, like a dozen or a couple dozen you know, high opacity paints is going to be, you know, a whole new range of 216 uh, colors, which I think is pretty remarkable. I mean, that's huge. That's that's uh, that's near the AK third gen size of paints. This is 240. So that's almost, you know, this size. And if they're all going to have really amazing coverage like we see here, then that, that would be truly remarkable. I mean, almost a game changer, in my opinion, because I, I feel like with all the different paint ranges I've tried, there's always something I like about the range, but there's usually a few things that kind of annoy me. Like Citadel, they have some nice colors, and their coverage is usually pretty good, but their whites and blacks aren't that great, and the pots are not that great, and they get gunk in the in the, the hinge mechanism, and the price per milliliter is kind of laughable. It's not, it's bad. It's the worst. It's the most expensive, and it's, yeah, I don't really see it as like the best quality to justify the price. But they do have a lot of really nice tutorials and documentation on how to use the colors and uh, things like that. The next range I tried was AK third gen paints. Uh, I think this paint range is really solid. It, the dropper bottle is really nice. It has a really nice screw top that, thanks to like the vertical ridges on the screw cap, it makes it really easy to open and close and you can set it upside down and on the side it won't roll around. And I, I noticed it doesn't have a lot of seepage. Usually uh, you open it and then it's usually clean. When you open the cap, the paints, the cover quite well, let's say a little better than GW usually, but a few paints just aren't very good. I've noticed they take like a ton of coats, but overall very solid, very good. And then I've tried uh, Pro Acryl. I think uh, Pro Acryl is really nice. I think it sometimes has some very interesting properties when they're diluted. I noticed on a few colors, if you dilute them a lot with water, they start to kind of beat up. But I noticed that's kind of fixed if you use a medium like Lamia medium instead of water to, to dilute it. But most of them are pretty thin. You don't even need to dilute them. I noticed some of them have really good coverage, but some of them kind of just have a little bit mediocre to subpar coverage. So they have a really nice white, really nice khaki, really nice uh, gray blue. But... A little inconsistent in the bottle cap. I think it's a, uh, it's pretty good. I like it overall. It, it has the little screw Elmer's glue screw top, and I like this because I've noticed you never. Oftentimes with dropper bottles, you get a little seepage, or like every time I shake it and then open the the cap, I'm always hoping and praying that it's not a mess in there. Sometimes it is, and you gotta wipe it off with a paper towel. But with the uh, Pro Acryl. You always know what you're getting. You unscrew it, you pour a little paint out, and then there's a little bit of paint left off you wipe away. And it's very predictable, whereas other ranges, you don't know what you're going to see once you open that top. Um, the next range I tried was a Duncan's Two Thin Coats. I think this is a good range. It's very similar to GW's and it's good color conversion charts. But my only real issue is that, again, it's with the seepage. Some colors just have a ton of seepage. You shake it and then you open it and then the color's all over the, the top of the spout. And that's annoying. And sometimes it can get on the threading, and then if it gets on the threading, then it makes it harder to open and close. So that's annoying. But they do have they do have uh, mixing balls, which is pretty nice. Pro Curl has mixing balls too. And then the next range I tried was Vallejo Game Color, the new one, the updated line. And I really like the line. I like the packaging. I like the fact that it has more paint. It has 18 milliliters as opposed to 17. I think it's a lot better than the old range. The coverage is a lot better. I think it flows out of the bottle really nicely. Um, one thing I did notice is that you kind of have to be careful how you apply it because it can give you bubbles if you let the paint get too thin and uh, pool in some of the recesses. But I noticed kind of a similar thing with AK paints, but I think the, the, the game color, it's even more prevalent. But as long as you can avoid that, it's really nice. It has a nice matte finish. 
It has a lot of nice color conversion charts with the GW range and is very affordable. Yeah, so it's pretty good, but it has a few issues in that bubbling issue and it doesn't have any mixing agitator balls. With these new Fanatic paints, it seems like it would take the best of everything I've just described, but it would fix all of the issues that bug most people about most paint ranges, like as in their opacity is not good enough or it takes too many coats or there's no agitator, it's hard to shake up or you know the color names are cryptic you don't know what they mean yeah it would so it would fix most issues as in it would have a wide range of colors just like ak does but all the colors would be labeled really nicely and conveniently for newbies or people or just uh you know if you ever just want to quickly know where a color falls in the range because the colors actually have a little uh, label that tells you the color family, the hexad family of where any individual color lies in the range and in the hexad. So this color would be desaturated blue grays. And I think this is such an innovative and common sense concept. It kind of blows my mind that no other paint maker has really done this before, or I haven't seen it. It just, it tells you on the front, the color family, like the triad or the hexad or the, but this is the hexad and it tells you it's kind of a mid-tone in the hexad, and it's a desaturated blue-gray. So that's really nice. I'm really happy to see that. And on top of that, on top of the just the name of the color that's usually more whimsical, it has an actual practical name. It describes the paint in very practical terms. So even if you're not super color savvy or aware of the range in general, you can see, oh, vivid purplish pink. Okay, I, I recognize that. Even, you know, even though I don't, I'm not familiar with this paint ring. Whereas, you know, AK does a, a decent job with this. They just say dark gray and they give you a number of where this falls in the range. But still, I mean, I've worked with these AK paints and sometimes it's just dark gray. Is that like a warm dark gray? Is that like a cooler dark gray? Is that a neutral dark gray? It just doesn't tell you enough information. But this is light years ahead of uh, a certain, <laughs> a certain uh, paint range we all know and love. And I think one of the worst culprits is probably uh, XV88. I mean, seriously. <laughs> What What is XV88? If, if you're new and you, you don't know anything about GW's IP, this doesn't tell you anything about what color this is. It's like a kind of a darker ochre color, but if you're not color savvy and you don't know what the IP is, this is kind of worthless information. It just says base in XV88, okay? What is that? But even this isn't the worst culprit I've seen. I think the worst culprit for paint name that tells you the least about it has to be Cuttlefish Colors Kevin. Seriously, it's called Kevin. <laughs> that's not even that that that, that 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 doesn't make any sense it's just is that the name of the person who made the paint it doesn't tell you about anything about the actual hue or the value or the saturation of the paint it's just it's just a name a name it could be totally interchangeable with you know joe or or uh jack devin yeah this is this is the goofiest uh naming convention i've ever seen for a miniature paint but to my point yeah I think it's very fascinating to see that Army Painter of all companies is going to be the one bringing in these uh, innovations to just make it more user friendly and they're going to have mixing balls and it's going to be higher opacity and it's going to have a huge range and it's going to have 18 milliliters per, per pot and if it really is as opaque and easy to use as it as they're advertising in this in this uh, kind of preview video it'll be yeah, that'll be incredible, and yeah, I would love to see that. I already have a good number of paints, but if it works as well as they say it does, I'm definitely going to get this because I'm always uh, looking for the best paint, the paint that allows me to work the most efficiently, the fastest, the best coverage, um, the easiest to use, has the nicest bottle. Yeah, this is exciting, and I hope they reveal more information soon. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Are you excited for this new paint range? Do you think this is all just hype and you're not convinced yet? You want to wait and actually try it for yourself? Let me know in the comments below. If you like my content, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.